Helen Keller. She saw nothing, heard nothing, yet inspired millions. Born into darkness and silence, Helen, with the guidance of her teacher Ann Sullivan, discovered the power of communication and knowledge. Her story may inspire you too. Once, I knew only darkness and stillness. My life was without past or future. But then, a little word from the fingers of another person fell into my hand. In that moment, my heart opened to the wonder of living. These are the words of Helen Keller, a woman who found light in a world of silence and darkness. This is her story. Helen Keller was born on June 27, 1880, in a small town in Alabama, USA. She was a bright, healthy baby full of curiosity. Her parents, Captain Arthur Keller and Kate Adams Keller, adored their lively daughter. But when Helen was just 19 months old, a sudden illness changed everything. Doctors didn't have a clear diagnosis for Helen's illness. Today, experts believe it was likely scarlet fever or meningitis. For days, Helen's fever raged, and her family feared for her life. Miraculously, Helen survived, but her parents soon noticed that something was different about their little girl. After recovering from her illness, Helen's mother, Kate, noticed changes in Helen's behavior. She no longer responded to sounds or voices, and she didn't react to visual cues. Their worst fears were confirmed. Helen could neither see nor hear. The illness had left her both blind and deaf. For Helen, this was the beginning of a world filled with silence and darkness. Trapped without language or understanding, she was frustrated and isolated. She felt lost and angry, unable to express her feelings or understand those around her. The young girl's world had become a prison. As Helen grew older, her frustration grew with her. She would throw tantrums, scream, and smash objects around her. She had no way to communicate her needs, and her family didn't know how to reach her. Helen was a bright child, but she was trapped in an unbreakable silence. By the time Helen turned six, her family knew they needed help. They learned about an institute for the blind and decided to travel there, hoping for guidance. The doctors at the institute confirmed that Helen would never regain her sight or hearing. But one doctor suggested something hopeful. Helen could learn with the right teacher. This advice led the Kellers to Ann Sullivan, a young woman who had experienced blindness herself. Ann had lost most of her vision as a child, but later regained some sight through surgery. She understood the challenges Helen faced. Ann agreed to become Helen's teacher. She moved into the Keller household determined to help Helen break free from her world of silence. Anne Sullivan was only 20 years old when she met Helen, but she was wise beyond her years. She saw Helen's potential and understood that her anger came from frustration. Anne was determined to teach Helen language, the key to communication. She began with the simple yet powerful idea of teaching Helen words through touch. Anne started by spelling words into Helen's hand, a technique called manual alphabet. She would place Helen's hand in hers and trace letters with her finger. The first word Anne taught her was doll. At first, Helen didn't understand the meaning behind these letters, but Anne believed that, one day, Helen would make the connection. That connection happened on a warm spring day. Anne led Helen to a water pump in the yard. She placed Helen's hand under the cool flow of water and spelled out W-A-T-R into her other hand, over and over. Suddenly, Helen understood. She realized that the letters represented the cool, flowing liquid. The word water had come alive in her mind. Helen's world burst open with this single word. She wanted to know the names of everything around her. She touched objects, plants, and people eagerly asking Anne to spell out each name. In just a few weeks, Helen learned hundreds of words. Language had unlocked her world and set her free. 
With language, Helen could finally communicate. She had broken through the silence that had trapped her. She learned that words held meaning, and she was determined to learn as much as she could. For Helen, this was only the beginning of her journey. Anne didn't stop at teaching Helen to spell words. She taught Helen to read using Braille, a system of raised dots that could be felt by touch. Helen learned to read entire books with her fingers, opening up a world of stories and knowledge. Reading allowed Helen to explore beyond her immediate surroundings. Anne also taught Helen to write. She would guide Helen's hand to help her form letters, then let her try on her own. With practice, Helen became an accomplished writer, able to express her thoughts and emotions on paper. Writing became Helen's way to share her mind with the world. By the time Helen was 10 years old, she had achieved another incredible breakthrough. She learned to speak. Using a technique called Tadoma, Helen learned to feel the vibrations of someone's throat and lips to mimic sounds. This accomplishment was almost miraculous, considering she couldn't hear her own voice. In 1900, Helen entered Radcliffe College in Massachusetts, USA. She was the first deaf and blind person to pursue a bachelor's degree. And sat beside her in every lecture, spelling out each lesson into Helen's hand. Despite the challenges, Helen's determination never wavered. At college, Helen began writing about her life and her beliefs. Her writing was filled with reflections on faith, courage, and the strength to overcome obstacles. Her words reached people around the world, showing them that even the greatest barriers could be broken. Helen Keller's writing wasn't just about her life. It was also about advocating for people with disabilities. She wanted the world to see that blindness or deafness didn't mean a lack of intelligence or potential. She wrote, The public must learn that the blind man has a mind that can be educated. Helen soon became an advocate for the disabled, using her platform to fight for their rights. She believed that everyone, regardless of ability, deserved education, employment, and dignity. Her advocacy would change the lives of thousands, inspiring new laws and policies around the world. Helen's activism didn't stop with disability rights. She was deeply concerned about social justice, poverty, and women's rights. She believed that all people deserved equal treatment and opportunities. For Helen, fighting for justice was a lifelong mission that she took very seriously. Helen often spoke about resilience. She once said, The world is full of suffering, but it is full also of overcoming suffering. This message inspired countless people to face their own challenges with courage and determination. Helen's words became a beacon of hope for anyone struggling. Throughout her life, Helen Keller received numerous awards and honors. She was recognized by governments, universities, and organizations around the world. But she remained humble, always focused on her mission to bring positive change. For Helen, the greatest reward was seeing her work improve the lives of others. In her later years, Helen continued to write, give speeches, and advocate for the rights of the disabled. Even as her health began to decline, she never lost sight of her purpose. Her words and actions inspired a new generation of dreamers and activists. Helen Keller's legacy goes beyond her personal achievements. She showed the world that disabilities don't define a person's potential. She helped change society's perception of blindness and deafness, proving that people with disabilities have unique gifts to offer. Helen's life was one of constant growth and learning. Even in her final years, she continued to seek knowledge, inspire others, and stand up for those who couldn't stand up for themselves. Her story is a testament to the power of resilience, compassion, and friendship. Helen Keller passed away peacefully in 1968 at the age of 88. She left behind a legacy of courage, compassion, and social change. Her work paved the way for others, making the world a more inclusive place for people with disabilities. 
Today, Helen Keller's words continue to inspire people around the world. She once said, True happiness is not found through helping yourself, but through faithfulness to a good purpose. The best and most beautiful things in life cannot be seen or touched. They are felt in the heart. Thank you for watching. Helen Keller's journey reminds us of the strength we all have within. What did you think about Helen's story? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more inspiring stories. Each like and subscription motivates us to bring more content that can make a difference. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.